Great to be with you. Peter Barlas here, cardiologist. Now, many of you have heard about the good cholesterol, namely the HDL and the bad cholesterol. But there's a third type that I would really like to uh, focus on that's attracting serious attention in the medical world. And it's called lipoprotein little a or small a, otherwise known as an LP little a. Now, viewers of the channel have been introduced to this uh, last year, and I gave a bit of a glimpse of what LPA is, but it's certainly gaining a lot more attention recently. And here's the key message. You could have perfect cholesterol numbers, but if your LP little a is high, your risk of heart disease might still be raised. Now let's explore why this is, and I'll also share some exciting new developments to target LP little a in the future. Now, to summarize, cholesterol transport is quite a complex topic, and uh, I'm not going to go into the minutiae of the details, but essentially, my practice really deals with patients with established cardiovascular disease predominantly, and obviously helping them better control cholesterol remains pivotal for their ongoing well-being. Uh, in summary, however, I want to explain to you a little bit about how cholesterol is actually metabolized in our body. Now, think of the liver as a manufacturing plant, and that really produces many, many things in our body. And cholesterol is one of them. It's produced in the liver, but also influenced by predominantly genetics and also lifestyle. And cholesterol is also absorbed through our bowel and, and gastrointestinal system. But when we look at genetics, the LP little a is an important topic. And certainly, we know that this is a predominantly genetic condition, not influenced by diet, not influenced by whether you're taking a statin or not, and it is an important thing to be aware of. Now, cholesterol, as I said, it's absorbed in the gastrointestinal system, and eventually all this cholesterol, and the one that's also produced in the liver, gets released in our bloodstream. And think about in our bloodstream, we have these factors or buses that are transporting uh, the cholesterol, and we've got the, the good buses, the good bus drivers as well, that are taking the, the particles of cholesterol and putting it back into the liver. But you've got the bad bus drivers who actually are taking the cholesterol particles and also depositing them in the arteries or in the wall of our arteries. And that's really you know, what we call the bad cholesterol. Although there's no such thing as bad cholesterol, certainly there are people at a higher risk where this LDL or low density cholesterol particles tend to build up inside the walls of our arteries, causing possibly problems. Now, LP little a essentially is also a bus, but think about LP little a potentially being a double-decker bus. It's probably more important. And uh, it's very similar to the bad cholesterol, but it has a different structure, and it's got a different extra protein called an apolipoprotein A. And that's like a sticky tail that changes the whole particle and it really becomes essentially more of a magnet, more of a target to snap up cholesterol and deposit it inside arteries. Now, it's only a small difference to the LDL, to the bad cholesterol, but it certainly has a bigger impact. And we feel that LP little a is also a major factor in the development of cholesterol or atherosclerosis, increasing risk of heart attack, increasing risk of stroke. Now, when we look at how the LP little a differs from LDL and HDL, well, LDL carries cholesterol, as I said, to the tissues, and the HDL is really the particle that takes the cholesterol, reduces inflammation, and puts it back into the liver. The LP little a also is one of those bad factors that can take cholesterol, build it up into the arteries, and also promote things like inflammation. Now, it does not go up and down with diet, exercise, lifestyle changes don't really make a difference, and genetics is really the major, major factor here. So having a strong family history and having siblings or parents that have this does put us at a slightly higher risk of developing or having this protein present. Now, it is inherited, and of course, if your family members have got high levels, then I think there's a strong chance that you may have it. So of course, please seek advice of your healthcare professional. It is a simple blood test. 
The LP little a is simply a blood test and uh, it takes you know, a couple of days to get back and it gives us a reading and certainly if it's high, then of course we can be proactive and take some steps and I'll go through some of those steps. Now, LP little a can and has been shown to increase the risk of stroke, increase the risk of heart attack, but also can affect the aortic valve and can cause aortic stenosis. And you might have heard that. It's a, you know, a calcification of the aortic valve that can develop a narrowing in this valve. And LP little a has been linked to aortic stenosis. There's recent research that in fact showed that LP little a, particularly in women, was a strong predictor of long-term cardiovascular events. So patients were followed up for many, many decades, and essentially after time, after about 20 odd years, they found that having a raised LP little a level, you were at a higher risk of developing long-term complications. So it is an important factor. And as I said, it's a blood test. It's measured in milligrams per deciliter. Other, other laboratories use nanomoles per liter. But essentially, a level of about more than 50 milligram per deciliter, or about you know, 75 nanomole per liter, is generally considered high. But again, there are various thresholds that uh, are affected by the lab that you get it tested from. Now, who should get tested for the LP little a? Well, I guess the key that I see is patients who might have a family member that's had heart trouble, cardiovascular events, heart attack, stroke at a young age. I think that's important. And that's more so even if their cholesterol has been quite low or the LDL has been quite low. If you have aortic valve disease or there's a strong family history of cholesterol issues and genetic factors in the, in the family, then I think it's worthwhile getting the LP little a tested. And because it's genetic, of course, it may be relevant for your children and siblings also. So important to, to be aware of that. Now, what can be done if it's high? At the moment, we don't have a clear cut treatment that targets lipoprotein little a. When you look at what's available for cholesterol, well, statins are good for lowering the LDL, but sometimes they can actually slightly cause an increase in the LP, little a. There are some new injectable treatments that were used for lowering cholesterol, PCSK9 therapies. Well, they can reduce LP, little a by about 20 to 30%. So certainly that's a significant and important uh, development. But there's hope. And that's the great news that I can share with you. And we know that there are emerging therapies. And these therapies are quite complex, that they target many, many proteins and RNA. Uh, and there's one called Olpasaran. And these are experimental drugs at the moment, but in clinical trials have actually shown to have a significant reduction in lowering LP little a, in some of them by 80 to 90 percent. So I really believe that these treatments are going to be the standard care for patients with high levels of LP little a who are at higher risk of developing cardiovascular events. So at the moment, what I suggest to my patients, well, look, don't be alarmed by the number. Like I tell my patients, don't be alarmed by the calcium score. We have to do what we can and address the reversible factors. And we keep on going back to basics, addressing diabetes, blood pressure, stopping smoking, uh, getting you know a bit more active, reducing a bit of body weight. They're the simple and often sometimes the hardest things to do. If you do have a high lipoprotein A level, well then at the moment I would actually try to get the LDL level lower than what I would normally if you have a cardiovascular problem, if you've had a stroke, a heart attack, bypass surgery or a stent. So we just want to target that. We want to just keep otherwise healthy and well, but I also encourage you to have a chat with your general practitioner and perhaps even getting a referral to a cardiologist or a lipid specialist. And there are many clinics arising now that are particularly staffed by you know, cardiologists and endocrinologists and these physicians who have an expert interest in cholesterol 
often what we call lipidologists. So I think it's important to go and get an assessment through an expert clinic because there are exciting new developments arising in the future. There are new therapies available, but also it's important to note how we can lower our current risk if we do have this protein that is high. So again, hopefully you found that useful, worthwhile getting it checked. As I said, if you've had heart trouble at a young age or if you know your family members have had high cholesterol problems or have a lipoprotein A level that's been found high in their case. And until the next video, bye for now.